The living of life is effortless. Effort is born from the mind. The body gets by effortlessly when no mind intervenes. When no thoughts try and make measurements and descriptions out of the action that is being taken by this effortless body that is effortlessly here, effortlessly growing or decreasing. You see how easy it is to begin to measure that what is immeasurable. The mind creates names, identities, to help one measure the amount of effort the mind can create to cause suffering to its own body, its own natural mind. They are affected, unfortunately, and they get ill. They will die anyway. But they will die having known that the birth and the life and even the death arise effortlessly. And in fact, no effort throughout the whole of this life has taken place. Effort is an imagined idea, imagined way to think I can become strong. The body is pure strength in its own way. It is pure immaculate ways of surviving the mind's costly offerings of wanting more, desiring more, needing more. Christ says the body will eat anything, matters not what, and is just grateful of what it gets. Christ says the body will do anything. So make sure your mind is not commanding, not wanting to cause any pain and suffering. The spirit that cares for all living things is walking tirelessly, but with no effort, no rewards. No desperation, no need to prevent, no need to cure. It just is the healer of life itself. The mind, that mind of effort, that mind of climbing the ladder of success, that mind of pushing, that mind of convincing, that mind of needing. It's only out to look out for itself because its lifespan is shorter than that of the body 
and that original mind. It is shorter because it only exists when it says to itself, I want, I need. When these thoughts arise about I, the singular person, it's the ego thinking about itself. Anytime these thoughts are not there, only body and pure mind, soul, spirit, consciousness and God exist in your life. The life of the body and the mind, the soul, the spirit, the consciousness, the God, the Brahman state that you are never not. is only interrupted by this ego. It comes, it goes. It makes noise. It makes promises. It offers hopes and beliefs. But all these things have to come with effort. Not the effort of doing but the effort of having to understand, to define, to elongate these thoughts into processes, how to do it, when to do it, where to do it, causes so much strain on the body and the mind. Ego is not intentionally trying to destroy life. Ego doesn't know what life is. Ego doesn't know what true love is, where to find it, how to get it. Ego is the only thing that is weedy in a world of pure love. It's weedy, it's needy, it's greedy. It loves effort. It loves the idea of pushing itself for more success, for more power. It loves itself immaculately. That what is effortless, the body, soul, spirit, pure mind basic, simple mind, God consciousness, does not love itself as one. It is love itself as one. There is a place for ego when it becomes effortless, when it bows and apologizes and forgives itself and realizes it can live, if only it realized sooner that to live is to be effortless, and to be effortless is to love, is to clearly see, clearly see with no effort. The majest, majestic world, the miracle of life, not just the bird flying, but the flight within its wings, the beat within its heart, the love within its eyes. Life is effortless. Caress your ego. Bring it home. Give it a name. Welcome it in. Open the door. And see yourself on the other side. 
in every shape, in every form. The knowing is to know that life, Brahman, consciousness, is living here in this present moment, truly, really, wholefully. Consciously, joyfully, lovingly. Always and always reflecting the love that it is with no effort. <laughs>